she just... On the night of July 26, explosions rang out in various regions of Crimea occupied by Russia. Shortly before that, a ballistic threat was declared. The Rostov and Kursk regions of the Russian Federation were also under attack. According to local residents, they heard the first loud explosions in Novofedorivka, Okunovka and Simferopol. Subsequently, the Crimean Wind Telegram channel published a video of the confirmation. There was also information about a fire at the Saki airfield in Novofedorivka. It is reported that one of the drones flew to the village of Nesvite, 15 kilometers from Rostov, where a fire broke out as a result. The grass is believed to have caught fire, one of the reports said. Subsequently, powerful explosions rang out in the Okunovka region and in Simferopol. And in Sevastopol, which was occupied by the Russian occupiers, the local authorities reported an attack by an unmanned aerial vehicle. The Russian Defense Ministry traditionally reported on the interception of drones, during the past night, air defense systems on duty intercepted and destroyed four UAVs over the Rostov region and two over the Kursk region. Despite this, Russian telegram channels published dozens of videos with the consequences of drone attacks. Also, the Ministry of Emergencies of the Russian Federation announces an explosion at a gas production enterprise in Yeno, but this incident is in no way related to the drone attack. There was an explosion in the condensate processing plant. The fire is contained, open burning is contained. The fire was given the two degree of complexity, the report says. The Russians continue to increase their military presence in the Zaporizhia region. The enemy has already pulled almost 90,000 troops to this section of the front, and over the past three weeks it has grown by another 2,000 occupiers. However, such a number of Russian servicemen is insufficient for an offensive campaign, so only positional battles are taking place in the Zaporizhia direction. No evidence of the enemy forming an offensive fist has been found. The operational situation in the Zaporizhia region with the buildup of enemy forces was reported by Dmitry Likovoy, a representative of the operational group of troops, Tavria. He confirmed that recently an increase in the territory of the Zaporizhia region of the Russian Federation troops has indeed been recorded. In total, there are already about 90,000 of them in the region, and another 2,000 occupiers have recently been added. Given the growing number of Russian troops, Likovoy hastened to reassure, the enemy has little strength for an offensive. The formation of offensive detachments is not recorded. However, our intelligence says that there are no abrupt, significant changes that would influence the change in the nature of military operations, and no signs of the formation of an offensive enemy group have been identified, Likovoy said. A representative of the Tavria explained that the total number of Russian troops in the Zaporizhia and Kherson regions is not enough to advance further than the line they occupied earlier. The enemy is not capable of actively fighting in several directions of the front at once, so it resorts only to positional battles. Russia is returning bodies of fallen defenders to Ukraine with missing internal organs. This may indicate that they are being used in Russia for transplantation. Ukraine form writes citing words from relatives of the dead. The wife of one of the prisoners of war defenders of the Mariupol garrison stated that when the bodies of Ukrainian prisoners of war are returned from Russia, they show not only signs of torture. Some of the bodies are returned without internal organs. She said this during a meeting with the ambassador of Ukraine to Turkey, Vasil Bodnar. Today it is already known for sure that we receive bodies of those tortured from captivity. We receive not only tortured bodies, but bodies that unfortunately are without organs. That is, this confirms the fact that the black market for organ transplantation in the Russian Federation is working. And unfortunately it is working with our prisoners of war. Therefore I believe that we need to talk about this to the whole world in order to stop this crime, said the wife of one of the defenders of Mariupol.
The wife of a prisoner of war appealed to Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan with a request to support the creation of a mixed medical commission which would monitor the health of both Ukrainian and Russian prisoners of war. I would also like to ask Turkey to act as a patron country in resolving all humanitarian issues related to the exchange of prisoners of war, the woman emphasized. She noted that Russia refuses to return and include prisoners of war from the Mariupol garrison on the lists of exchange. This is a real pain that motivates us to work faster and stimulate our international partners to take certain actions. One of the main demands is to create an international medical commission that would investigate the conditions of our prisoners of war and help them fight health problems. And this is one of the messages that was conveyed to the Turkish side. Ukrainian Ambassador to Turkey Vasil Bodnar stated,